So before we jump in, I want to ask you, by a show of hands, how many of you believe that world peace is possible? And how many of you believe that world peace is possible simply by living a life you truly love? <laughs> There's like a few, like, I don't know about that. So we often think of, of world peace as this distant, far off, lofty notion, something we see on holiday cards once a year. And I think that that's one of the reasons why we don't think it's practical, because we haven't made it an achievable goal in our real lives. We think of it as something for the Nelson Mandela's and the Mother Teresa's of the world, but we don't think about how can I, by following my passion, my heart's vision, live a life that makes sense and that brings about world peace. So I want you to think back when you were a little kid, and do you remember the question that parents and adults always asked you? They'd get down on their knees and they'd say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you would look up and say, a ballerina, <laughs> or a firefighter, or a lead guitarist, if you'd just seen your first concert, or a doctor, or a lawyer. And every week it changed, and every week it was exciting, and you felt this enthusiasm and this opportunity that anything was possible. And then do you remember when that question changed to, what are your plans? Where are you going to college? How are you going to make a living? And that enthusiasm and that excitement and that joy that you had as a little kid for all the things that were possible turned into all the things that you're supposed to want and have. The right job, the right salary, the right house, the right car, the right husband, the right wife, whatever it may be. And when I was 16, I remember hearing this question a lot, what are your plans? And I thought to myself, I looked around, I grew up in Atlanta, and there's a lot of people waiting around in traffic to get to work. And I looked around and I said, two or three hours in traffic, all this stress for the keeping up with the Joneses, to do the right thing, the right job, it seems like a lot of work, and isn't there something more than that? Couldn't there be more than that? And I really believe that there could. So fast forward many years when I got to college and I had a choice point. On the one hand, I could do what I was supposed to do. I could follow expectations, I could follow this path, move to New York, work up the ladder, get the right apartment, the right job. Or I could choose to follow my heart and do something completely different. The path was completely unclear. I didn't even know what I was going to get into. I chose my heart. And it took me to rural China. <laughs> which you probably didn't see that coming. <laughs> like white girl from Atlanta ends up in the rice fields. And so I was the only white girl in the town. There were literally miles and miles of rice fields. I was teaching, volunteer teaching, 21 classes of 60 kids each. And oftentimes I would go to my students' houses and, and stay with their family and get to know their families. And it would often require over an hour of walking through the hills of Hunan just to get and share a meal with their family. And these kids just, I love them. I'm going to show you them. Such enthusiasm, such excitement, so curious about the outside world. And they had all these questions and all these ideas about what life could be. And I love them, absolutely love them. And their, their joy their passion for the world. And so at the end of the year, I gave an exam, an oral English exam. And I had, it took me three weeks to get through all my students. And this girl came up in front of me and I hadn't seen her before. And I asked her the question I asked everyone, what did you learn in oral English this year? And she looked at me and she said, at first, I think you are bad <laughs> because you are from America. And America makes war and war is bad. But then, I see you are very friendly. And friendly is good. So now, I think China and America can be friends. Happy people don't make war. If you are truly happy, if you are truly following your heart's language, in Chinese they call it xin li hua. It literally translates as the inside of your heart's language. If you're truly living a life you love, you have more to give to other people. Your cup runneth over. You have more to give. You have more to receive. You don't need to compete. You don't need to take anything away from anyone else. And so I believe that 
whether it's you moving to China, which probably many of you will not be doing, or following your own heart's language, whatever that may be. My grandmother, who has been a huge mentor and just love in my life, she lived to be 100. She ate ice cream every single day, born and raised Louisville, Kentucky, never traveled to other countries, but she made a huge impact in our family. And that had a ripple effect. And so whether it's five people or it's five billion people, if you live a life you love, if you're true to your heart's language, and I know that some of you may be thinking, well, that seems so easy to live a life you love. Sounds like something we see on those greeting cards once a year. But I assure you, departing from all those expectations, being true to your heart will not only probably be the hardest thing you've ever done, but it will also be the most rewarding. Because you will meet people you never expected to meet. You will get a chance to fully live your passion and your dream to see what is on the other side of that. And so I do believe in world peace. I believe that by each of us living a life we love, being true to ourselves, we can better appreciate ourselves and each other. So what is in your heart and why wait? Thank you.